welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors, and today I want to give you a tool that you can use to check the shape of your mouth, or embouchure is the word we use, to make sure you're really getting the best tone out of your instrument. Now what I have to say today is something that may not be new to you. In fact, it's probably not new to you, but I've really noticed lately that many people who know this aren't really aware enough of it to make the changes they need to have their tone sound clearer, their high notes come out better, and all the good things that come with having a really great embouchure. I've been a professional teacher and performer for 30 years now, and I've noticed that many of the common challenges we all experience as clarinetists can be fixed if you just know how to do it. So today's lesson, I'm gonna be looking at your bottom lip and your chin. And I wanna get into this in more detail than I have in my other videos because I think it's really important. In fact, I've made it the theme of the week with all of my students, and I've noticed that even the best students get rusty at this from time to time. So even if you're a more experienced player, you may want to check this in yourself to see if you're doing it well. So basically, when we play clarinet, we all know we have a reed on the instrument and that it vibrates back and forth. And we want this reed to vibrate as much as possible to give us the very best tone we can have. Anything that gets in the way of that vibration is gonna get in the way of our best sound. The crucial part of our embouchure is our lip and our chin because our reed sits right upon that. So what you do here has a huge impact on your tone and most people do not do it properly and you are probably one of those people who aren't doing it properly. So this is what I would love for you to do and I'm gonna show you lots of pictures in this video to illustrate this. What I want is for you to get a picture of yourself in profile from the side because you can't really tell by looking in a mirror or looking straight ahead if your embouchure is correct. When we look at our embouchure from the side, we can really see the shape of our lips and our chin. And here's what we want to see. You want the edge of your bottom lip tucked over your bottom teeth and everything else pulled down. Now I've said this before, but what I've noticed is that most people don't do this enough. When we look from the side, you'll see a concave curve here. What I see in most of my students are variations on the following. There's so much of bottom lip going over their teeth that they swallow it. It looks like this. They might even start by getting it set and as their clarinet goes in their mouth, they swallow their lip. <laughs> what we have is a big soft mushy cushion for the reed. That doesn't work. Here's the next thing I see. People do get it set properly and then as soon as they blow, it collapses and gets mushy. Now the other thing I often see is just right under the bottom lip, there's a little bit of fold. So although my chin was curving in, there's a big fold there. And I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of photos that I've taken of my students in the last week or so that show you what they're doing and how they need to improve it. And most of them had no idea what they were doing until I showed them the photo. And the really great thing is that once I showed them the photo, they could see for themselves what needed to be improved and they were able to improve it. And the difference in their tone was instant, good, and amazing. Now it takes a little while to train your muscles to do this as a habit. I would say about two weeks. And I really wanna encourage you to work on this because it's a relatively short-term investment of your time and energy to train these muscles and a big return in the type of sound you get. Here's how I recommend you do it. Step one, take a photo of yourself from the side when you're playing. So if you're someone who swallows your lip, you're gonna see that. And your job is gonna to be to pull your lip out and down so that if you were looking at yourself from the front, you'd see a little bit of the pink part of your lip, even when you're playing. Just a little bit is there. We're gonna pull it down. Listen to the difference in tone, as much as we can hear through the computer. Here is me swallowing my lip. It's much easier for me to play when this is pulled down. The, the tool that'll help you 
is your index finger, or any finger you like. If we just play an open G, that's the G with all the holes on our clarinet open, what we can do is literally pull this down while we're getting set up. It would look like this. So see how I'm encouraging this to come down right before I play. And in fact, even when I am playing, I'm going to continue to encourage that. Because sometimes when we first blow, it collapses. That might look like this. Now, as you're moving your lips around, ear embouchure is going to be unstable. So you might hear your sound, whoa, 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 wavering around a little bit. Of course, we don't want that to happen. But it's sort of while you're coaxing these muscles down, you might have a bit of that going on. The one thing that this can throw off as we're pulling our skin down, if our jaw opens too much so that there's less pressure, um, you'll, you might experience the, the pitch suddenly going way flat. It might be like this. And then you've just opened your jaw too much. So we're not moving your jaw, not the bones, just what's sitting on top of the bones, our skin and muscles here. Now, I've demonstrated this in other videos, but I'll show you right now. If I just play a note with my embouchure really pulled away from the reed, and then I let my bottom lip go a little bit floppy, you'll hear the difference. Now, it's a relatively, some might say a relatively small difference, but here in my studio, where I can hear the sound really well, it's quite a big difference. And what I love when I do this with my students right here is that they hear the difference for themselves. I'll ask them to play maybe just a bar of music with their normal embouchure and then to really pull it down, set it, and play that again with a proper embouchure. Their high notes come out better, their tone is better, they're more in tune, there's all kinds of great benefits. The only way I know of to master this is for you to determine that maybe for the next two weeks, Every single time, every single time you put your clarinet in your mouth, you're going to encourage it with your finger. There are a couple reasons to do this. One is that sometimes these muscles literally do not know how to do it. You might be looking at this video and going, uh, my muscles don't know how to do that. That's really common. I find about half the people I encounter, that's the case. Your muscles can learn how to do it, but you need to model for them what they need to do. And when you have your clarinet in your mouth and your finger is pulling it into place, it's sending a message to your brain that you want these muscles to learn that skill. And they can. If you send that message repeatedly, your brain's going to pick up on it, amazing tool that it is, and you're going to learn this faster. So every time you put your clarinet in your mouth, pull those muscles into place with your finger. And on a regular basis, play something like an open G where you can check it while you're blowing as well. So there I noticed it slipped when I started blowing and I was able to pull it back in shape. I'm drilling this down because it's really important and I really think it'll make a difference in your playing if you master this. So I'm going to show you some photos of some of my students and what they've done and you'll notice it in yourself. One of the things we want to look for when we see a picture of our embouchure is that we see vertical lines rather than horizontal. What I mean by seeing vertical lines is that when we have these muscles pulled down, that's a vertical action, and when we bring our corners in, which is another good habit, you can see muscle lines here going this way. Um, you can get real close to see that. Here and here. <laughs> That's kind of an odd close-up, but it lets you see. The things we want to avoid are smile lines. I see some people smile when they play. And even though they look very happy, when we see lines in this direction, it's a sign that we're not supporting the albature properly. So while you're thinking of pulling down here, it's going to get, bring your side muscles in in a way that also really helps support your tone. So I encourage you to really work on this this week. Let's take a look at some real life before and after photos. And I really encourage you to take pictures of yourself so that you get an idea of what's currently working on your own embouchure and you'll get some better ideas on how you can correct it for much better tone, much easier high notes, all the benefits that I really want you to have in your own life. This first photo 
uh, on the left, we see the before photo. So what I see right under his lip here is a lot of mush sitting on the reed. This is keeping the reed from vibrating, and what he really needs to do is pull that away from the reed. Now on the right, one week later, we have his after photo, and we can see we're starting to see that concave curve here, which is a good sign. That's what we want to see. I think he's really moved in the right direction here, and his tone will be much clearer because of it. Now I also talked about looking for vertical lines rather than horizontal lines in the embouchure. What I like is right here we're starting to see a nice vertical line. That's showing that not only is he pulling everything down properly, but the corners of his mouth are also sealing inward quite nicely. So that's a really good thing. Now I feel like he still has room to continue to pull this further away from the reed, but he's definitely taken a step in the right direction. Here's another person. Now the photo on the left shows a very, very bumpy bottom lip. And again, quite mushy right where the reed goes in. Now our focus here is embouchure, but I'll also point out this person has a tendency to look down. You can see his chin is pointing down a bit and uh, his clarinet angle is quite far out. Odds are his sound will be more focused if he lifts his head up and you can see the picture on the right. He's actually doing that a little bit more and pulling his clarinet in. I feel like he has more room to improve that but the picture on the right was taken a week later and what I really like is we're starting to see that nice curve underneath here. It's looking a lot better. So again I feel like he started to straighten out the blob there He's pulling it away from the reed, and it's in the right direction. Now, I'd still like to see firmer corner support and a little better angle on this student, but I like the improvement that I see there. All right, this next student is quite young, and the picture on the left shows how he usually plays. And this is a really common embouchure. You might see something like this in yourself. In fact, not only is this flat, it almost curves toward the reed instead of away from it. The shape we want is to pull everything away following our chin line so that it's more concave rather than convex. Now this student, his muscles literally did not know how to do this. And that's really common. You might find your muscles really just don't know how to make this shape. So after much work, he was able to do this without his clarinet. And that really is the shape we're looking for, a nice curve like that. And what I encouraged him to do is to make this shape first, then put his mouthpiece in his mouth, then reach up with his hand, pull it down and away. So he's kind of sending a message to his brain, this is the direction we want these muscles to go. And his brain will learn how to do that better over time. My guess is in about two weeks, this will be much more natural for him and he'll be sounding a lot better. All right, we have three pictures of this young man. The first photo is how he always played his bass clarinet. Now we see serious trouble right here. His bottom lip is almost folded under here. And in fact, looking at this photo, I would question whether his lip is even covering the top of his bottom teeth. It almost looks like they're just completely rolled out. So the first thing we had him do was make sure the very edge of his lip was tucked over his bottom teeth. But not too far, if we go back a minute, this boy is swallowing his bottom lip. So much of his lip is in his mouth that it forces this convex shape. Here we can see he's pulled some of the pink part up. So this guy definitely has enough out, but maybe too much. So we got his lip to go a little over his teeth, and then he reached up with his hand and pulled it down. Excellent skill. He wasn't able to hold that shape without his hand there, but what I encouraged him to do is every time he put the mouthpiece in his mouth was to reach up with his hand and help it get set. And look at that nice vertical line that we see. Good sign. Here's how he looked on his own after one week. Much better curve here than the picture on the far left. And I'd say there's still room for him to improve this. A little bit mushy here, but much better than the before photo over here. And boy, did his tone ever sound better. So these are things you can look for in yourself. Now here's another example. This boy on the left, not too bad. We could sort of argue there's a bit of a convex curve there. But right here again, his lip is kind of folding under and it's quite soft. And just that little bit of blob was putting a little buzz, a little weird vibration in his sound that wasn't so good. Over here, much better. He's pulling it down, 
And what do we see? Much more vertical muscle lines. And his tone sounded fantastic with that embouchure. That's the direction we want to be headed. What I would love for you to do is take photos of yourself. Take a before photo. Take an after photo in two weeks. If you want to send your embouchure photo to me for feedback, feel free. You can email me at michelle at clarinetmentors.com. But I think you'll see it yourself. I think we've looked at enough examples here to give a sense that we're looking for no blobby stuff under the reed here. A nice curve down here. And as your corners come in, perhaps even a little bit of a vertical muscle line. Most people know about this and don't quite have it mastered, but it's fairly easy to improve it hugely in about two weeks. So I really encourage you to do that, and I look forward to hearing how it goes for you. If you've enjoyed today's video, I would love to hear from you. In fact, I'd love to see your before and after embouchure photos. I want to see what your embouchure looks like today and what it looks like in two weeks after you do some work on this. It really will make a difference in your playing. You'll notice there's a comments box right underneath this video, and I would love to hear from you. Put your comments in there, your questions. I do check them regularly, and I will respond to your questions about anything related to clarinet, but especially your embouchure for today's video. I also want to invite you to join my Clarinet Mentors community. It's absolutely free. If you sign up at www.learnclarinetnow.com, you'll get a newsletter for me every two weeks or so, and it has my favorite clarinet pointers and tips to help you play clarinet more easily. You'll find a video like today's video in each and every issue, and also just some recommendations on cool clarinet gear and music that I enjoy myself and that I think you would enjoy too. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Clarinet Mentors video.